Yes, Kelly, I do like the stock. And I think especially after the move that we saw in tech over the course of January, we're going to see a rotation into Staples names. And I think that Pepsi is a great opportunity right here, primarily because we have seen Pepsi fall over the course of the past two months. That is going to provide a really nice buying opportunity. I have a key area of support on the weekly charts between $160 and $170 a share that I like for a nice buying point. And I think that if we can hold this price point, continue to have positive earnings just like they announced last quarter, then we can see the shares trade higher back up to new all-time highs. This a good quick aside for me to ask you, I mean, how do you feel about the overall market when you mentioned this trade into Staples? Well, you know, when you look at the market here, we saw the pretty typical January rally and the January effect, the run into earnings. That's something that I like to trade every year. And this year it was incredibly strong. Hmm. Typically after that, we usually see a pullback, especially in tech stocks. And we usually see a rotation into consumer staples names. I think that the charts are setting up perfectly for that right now. Obviously every year can be different, but I like looking at a move into consumer staples names here, especially because we're gonna see retail earnings coming up quickly. Interesting, okay, and there are a lot of people talking about like, are we about to get this big kind of reset after the run that we've had? So that, that would certainly drive. Dom, thank you. We'll move on and talk about a firm, the buy now, pay later company reporting after the bell with a 72%, this is what makes people nervous, Danielle, a 72% rally to start the year, and yet it's still down 75% over the past year. It's actually beaten revenue estimates for eight straight quarters, but it's not expected to post a profit till 2025. Kate Rooney has more of the story here. And the shares are down 5% today, Kate. Yeah, it's so hard to follow this stock, Kelly. Like you said, if you look at year to date, it's down 75%, but or up 75% rather, but you zoom out, it's a totally different story. The thing to watch with a firm, it's something called the take rate. That's pretty much the revenue less the transaction cost. Key metric for analysts out there. You also want to keep an eye on loan loss provisions and delinquencies. That could also give us a bit of a a glimpse into the health of the consumer. Gross merchandise volume is a key metric. That really shows its overall activity on a firm, how much people are taking out in terms of those buy now, pay later loans, how much money is moving across the platform. Partnerships are big. They had this big Amazon partnership that expired a couple weeks ago. They'll want to hear commentary from Max Levchin, the CEO, on the call about that. And then Peloton during the pandemic was such a huge boost for a firm. It's actually been a drag on revenue in recent quarters. And they've talked a lot about moving away from that and sort of diversifying the partnerships there. And then finally, competition. You can't forget Apple moving into buy now, pay later. You've got Venmo. You've got all the banks. So investors really want to hear how are they going to build a moat here sure. and what's different about a firm. Great point. Danielle, I'm not sure if it's this one or Robinhood that you think isn't going back to the previous highs. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Honestly, both of them, Kelly, when you're looking at a firm, it seemed like a great idea in the beginning, buy now, pay later, you know, inflation, people needed a way in which they could buy goods and pay later, right? But everything that Kate mentioned are providing huge overhead resistance. And at the end of the day, this company is just not unique. There's so many different reasons why it could fail. And when I'm looking at the charts, to me, it has to be a short. I will say, however, though, that this stock does have high short interest, so you have to be careful with it. And on earnings, it can be incredibly volatile. Sitting at the $16 price point, it's not a great entry, but if we end up getting a move up into about the $20, $25 price point, that is a spot that I would rather get short. But at the end of the day, I think this one is going to keep going down, even if they can manage to have some sort of positive thing to say on earnings. Sure. All right, well, that leads us right into Robinhood. We'll see if it's the same story. They're also out after the bell. They've actually had a decent start to the year as well with a 30% gain, but they're 36% off the 52-week highs, even more from the all-time highs. And what's happening with retail traders? Kate Rooney, what are we expecting to hear about this company? So the, the slowdown in retail trading is expected. They've talked about that in terms of guidance. I want to, uh, in previous quarters, that a lot of people you know, went back to work. The meme stock rally has faded, although it actually has returned a little bit this year. But their traders are just doing less. They're a lot less active than they were during the pandemic and when this company went public. Investors, as a result, are looking for revenue diversification. They want to see Robinhood move away from just those trading fees, things like payment for order flow, which are also under pressure uh, for regulators, and then things like kind of the more boring side of finance, savings and retirement accounts, Growth on that side and subscription revenue. So that's something traders really will be looking for. Account growth is huge. Revenue per user, that's been slowing down in previous quarters. So guidance around that 
will be big. And then cost cutting. This is one of the fintechs that has done layoffs in recent quarters. They've talked a lot about austerity and moving from growth to being a little more conscious on what they're spending. And you've seen that in tech and fintech especially. Right. And then the guidance overall. I mean, I mentioned the sort of rebound in some of the, the meme stocks and crypto in general. That may bode well for the current quarter. It'll be interesting to see any commentary around how much of a boost that could actually provide. Danielle? Kelly, I like this one for a short as well, but again, you do want to be a little bit careful on earnings. I will say that because it's rallied so well going into the start of the year, that is going to provide a better entry point. And as long as it stays below $15 a share where I have key resistance, I want to continue looking at it to the downside. I think that there's a significant amount of not just overhead resistance on a technical perspective, but there are just so many issues with this company between the retail trader bust, uh, Bitcoin is now rallying into resistance yet again. I think their crypto portion is going to continue to suffer. And the payment for order flow issue with the SEC is a big problem for Robinhood. They're going to have to figure out a way that they can make additional revenue. And that was the biggest, <laughs> that was one of the most important aspects of their business. Yeah. So looking at the stock, I like it to the downside.